Marcel Schwab was a well-known symbolist writer from France, some of whose works we have already discussed back in episode 63. Today I would like to focus on probably the most well-known work of Schwab's, as well as one of the lesser-known ones. The Book of Monel is one of Schwab's most well-known books. It was originally published in 1894 and was written in response to the death of tuberculosis of Louise, a woman and possible prostitute whom Schwab had met and kept taking care of until her death. The book is a bit of a hodgepodge, collecting genuine short stories as well as a different section of related short stories, as well as several pages of nihilistic philosophy to ease you in. In the first section, The Words of Monel, concerns the various words that the ever-fleeting Monel tells to the narrator, such as build your house alone and alone burn it to the ground, or love the moment, all love that lasts is hatred. This section somewhat stumbles due to repetition, as most of it consists of Monel saying, let me tell you about X, and then proceeding to espouse nihilistic carpe diem-esque philosophy about said thing. However, it isn't long, and is followed by the best part of the book, The Sisters of Monel, which is a collection of brief little short stories. There is the story of a girl's discovery in the woods of a strange green girl who doesn't speak any intelligible language or eat any human food. The story of a girl's lifelong quest for a magical fairy to help heal her crippled friend. The horrid tale of the transformation of the vain princess Morgan upon seeing her face in the mirror for the first time mixed in with the tales of childhood playtime and running away from home. The book concludes with Monel, showcasing the somewhat contradictory linked stories of Monel taking a group of children into a house where they need not work but can remain hidden away playing while she herself dies and then gets resurrected, at least metaphorically. The Children's Crusade followed two years after the Book of Monel, it deals with the fated 1212 Crusade, quote-unquote, where hordes of children wanted to travel to Jerusalem to free the tomb of Christ. The book begins with a Goliard, a poor clerk, out in the woods begging when he comes across the children walking towards Jerusalem and becomes infected with joy at seeing them. The second section narrates the story of a leper who finds himself abandoned by gods and feels his sins are unatoned for and is prowling about to suck the blood from the passing children. However, they do not fear him despite him being a leper. The following section is focused on Pope Innocent III praying to God, in whose manifestation he has ceased to believe in, to not punish the children for their ignorance. The book then proceeding to tell the story of Nicholas, Ellen, and Dennis, three children who had heard the white voices and joined the throng of passing children insistent on liberating Jerusalem. Then the story gives us a report of a clerk concerning all the children demanding to be given passage in a boat across the Holy Land, and then finally recounting from several perspectives what actually happened once they did cross the ocean. It is a short, grim story of hope and failure worthy of being ranked among the best of Schwab's work.